This is the 68 Automag. It features an all stainless steel construction, blow forward valve mechanism, and bayonet mount barrel. This was the first gun to ever introduce the power feed. It now comes in several models. We also have a mini mag model and a classic model which you can build up to produce whatever type of high performance gun you want. In this particular model, the Automag, we also have rubber grips. Well, everything that you see on this gun is stainless steel and it features a single screw to unscrew and get to all the parts. The Automag is composed of three basic components. It has a built-in regulator, which is rare for most guns, an on-off valve controlled by the trigger, and an air chamber and bolt assembly, which is controlled by pressure. The 68 Automag family of guns is based on a blow-forward design. The main difference between this design and other guns on the market is that a spring returns the gun to the cocked position. In all other guns, it requires air to blow the bolt back to the cocked position. What this ensures is that your gun will always be cocked and ready to fire, no matter how low the pressure is. Let's take a look at the cutaway so we can further understand the flow. In this first sequence, the gun is gassed up from the tank and air enters the valve at high pressure. Uh, the tank pressure usually runs between 800 and 1000 psi with CO2, and that comes into the valve area just above the field strip screw, as you see here. Once entering, the high pressure air goes past the regulator seat into the piston area where it pushes against the piston, moves up through the transfer port to the top of the on-off valve, goes through the on-off valve and starts filling the air chamber. All this time the trigger is forward and the bolt is held in place by the sear. Once pressure in the air chamber gets close to its set pressure of about 400 psi, the regulator valve and piston assembly move backward to shut the air off from the tank. At a regulated pressure of 400 psi, the valve closes entirely and the pressure inside the air chamber and through the rest of the system is lower than the tank pressure. From the animation of the airflow, you can see that there's a complex process that's going on inside the gun. All of this is controlled by the trigger mechanism. There's critical timing between the on-off valve sealing and the release of the bolt. It's best not to mess with the geometry of the sear system. So let's go in and take a look at the actual parts of the gun. To completely disassemble the Automag, first unscrew the field strip screw and then the front frame screw. This will drop the entire assembly off of the rail. The rail assembly has attached to it the sear, which will come out as an assembly from the frame. Once the valve body has been removed from the main body, it can be separated into two halves by unscrewing the back half, which is called the regulator body. This reveals the major internal components of the gun. The central components are the valve pin, the regulator seat, and the on-off valve assembly shown here. In this view, one can see the spring pack in the regulator body, which pushes against the piston, which actuates the regulator valve. The O-rings are shown in the on-off valve surrounding the on-off pin. The power tube tip, power tube o-ring, and power tube spacer are in the front assembly. As you can see, the regulator body will screw back into the valve body for assembly back into the gun. Once your pieces are back in place, seat the main body into the rail and the rail back into the frame and reinsert your screws. The first thing you want to do to strip your gun is hold the valve assembly and unscrew the field strip screw. This should come out easily. If it's a little over tightened, there's an Allen wrench hole in the back of the field strip screw and you can use the Allen wrench supply with the gun to unscrew that. When you do that, you must pull the trigger, which will seat the on-off pin up into the valve. The valve slides out, but it does not come out all the way. You need to give it a little bit of a twist to the right and it'll come out through the Z slot in the rail. Let's put down the gun first and we'll take a look at the valve. The valve is basically three simple pieces. The first thing that will come off is the bolt assembly and the spring sort of sticks on the bolt so you don't drop it off into the grass. The next thing you can do to take the system apart is unscrew the regulator body on the back from the valve body. And what you're looking at here is the regulator seat which again is stuck into the regulator body. It kind of snaps in with a little bit of effort. And the valve system the valve pin, which kind of looks like a German hand grenade. We call it the German hand grenade. And that's held in place by a spring that's in the valve body. 
So this is the part here that if you ever get any dirt in this part, this controls velocity problems. Whenever you have a velocity problem, look first to your regulator seat or replace your regulator seat. That is the most critical velocity component in the gun. Once you've got that apart, we can now move to the valve. The valve body has in it the on-off assembly. In this case, you can see it's made up of an O-ring, the on-off top, the on-off pin, and the on-off bottom. In all cases, the on-off parts are prefaced with the word on-off. So you have the on-off bottom, the on-off pin, this is one of the on-off O-rings, and this is the on-off top. Now that we've taken out the on-off assembly, let's look at the power tube. The power tube tip is this brass piece on the end. To get that off, you need a quarter. The quarter goes in the slot. Unscrew the power tube tip. Behind the power tube tip is the power tube spacer. And underneath that is the power tube O-ring. These three pieces serve to seal the bolt and the air chamber. The power tube O-ring is a source of leaking down the barrel. Whenever you've got a leak and you fire the gun and you hold the trigger and the leak stops, it's most likely the power tube O-ring and that should be the first one you replace. The power tube spacer also controls whether or not you get bolt stick or leaking down the barrel. If you let go of the trigger and it leaks down the barrel, the first thing you should try and do is go to a shorter spacer these spacers are laser engraved with their length on the side. This particular one is a 220. If the gun were leaking down the barrel, I would go to a 225 and see if that helps. If you're getting bolt stick, go to a longer spacer, and that will prevent the bolt from sticking. At this point, we've disassembled most of the parts in the gun that are required for maintenance. We've talked about the fact that if you have leakage down the barrel or you have bolt stick, you should work on replacing the power tube O-ring or the power tube spacer. There's a thing we haven't talked about yet called lawn sprinkler. If you fire and hold the trigger on the gun and you hear an intermittent air leak down the barrel that goes tsst, 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 that's called lawn sprinkler. Lawn sprinkler can be fixed easily by replacing this small Teflon O-ring on the top of the on-off assembly. We've also talked about the fact that if there's velocity problems, velocity usually has a problem with the regulator seat. So you should clean or replace your regulator seat. Now that we've gone through all the parts of the gun, let's go ahead and reassemble it. Starting with the power tube, we'll take the power tube O-ring, put that in first. Next, we'll take the power tube spacer. And lastly, the power tube tip goes in on top. Screw that down and tighten it up with our quarter. Now let's move on to the on-off assembly. We'll put the valve body down for a second. We'll pick up the on-off bottom and the on-off pin. We'll slide this in here. We'll put the on-off top on the on-off pin and that'll fall off. So what we'll do here is we'll use this on-off O-ring to hold the entire assembly together. Now that we have the on-off assembly together, We'll take the on-off valve. There's still an O-ring left down in there. That's usually not a problem O-ring. And we just pop the on-off assembly and seat it in the valve body. Now again, that stays in there so it won't fall out. Next, we move to the regulator valve, which has been cleaned. We look at our regulator seat. It looks pretty good. Pop it in. We screw the two halves together. When you screw them together, you can line up the logo. Now we have the valve assembly back together. The last thing we do is we drop on the bolt and the bolt spring. Now that we've gone through the valve assembly, let's take apart the gun chassis and see what we have. First, unscrew the barrel one quarter turn to the left and pull it out. Next, use the supplied Allen wrench to disassemble the frame. 
We go in and unscrew the front frame screw. At this point, the frame will come easily off of the rail. Now we can lift the main body from the rail. And we have left the sear assembly. In order to take the sear out, it comes out through the top of the rail. You push up from underneath, slide the sear forward, and it'll come out through a hole. The sear pin will slide out from the rail, and there you have your sear. Right here is the golden clevis, and it's connected to this rod. This rod is pre-adjusted at the factory to give a small clearance between the trigger and the sear assembly. Do not adjust the length of this rod. It will only screw up your trigger geometry. Next, let's take a look at the barrel assembly. The barrel has two O-rings on the outside, which are used to make a snug fit between the barrel and the main body. They also function to hold in the wire nubbin, which keeps your ball from rolling forward down the barrel. If you look in the end of the barrel, you can see the wire nubbin will protrude about the thickness of a matchbook cover into your barrel. And that's what you want it to do. The combination of the main body and the barrel will tell you what's wrong with your gun if you're having ball breakage problems. There are two main causes of ball breakage in the automag. Number one is the wire nubbin is not protruding far enough into the barrel. Number two, the balls are not feeding correctly through the power feed tube. This is usually caused by a feeder which is not capable of keeping up with the automag's rate of fire. There's an easy way to tell whether you're having problems with ball feed or with paint. Occasionally you get bad paint that blows up in the barrel also. Paint that's bad will blow up down the barrel. And you will not see any paint in the feed tube. If you're cutting a ball in half as it feeds in and you've got a feed problem, paint will come up around the outside of this feed tube. So there's two distinct ways you can tell. Sometimes you may have a feed problem, other times you may have a paint problem. Now that we have the gun all apart, let's start putting it back together. First thing we'll do is we'll pick up the rail. We'll pick up the sear and the sear pin. We'll put the sear pin inside the sear. We'll drop the assembly through the rail and we'll seat it down in the rail like so. Next thing we'll do is we'll pick up the main body and we'll seat the main body completely into the rail, making sure that the back edge is seated completely inside the rail. From this point, we need to assemble the frame, being careful to stick the sear in behind the trigger. If you pull the trigger forward, you should see the back of the trigger rod coming out behind the sear. Holding the assembly together, we'll drop the front frame screw. In the front, make sure you keep the washer underneath the frame screw. And we'll tighten up the front frame screw here. Give it a little extra torque. Okay, so that's your a completed assembly of your frame, your rail, and your main body. Next, we'll take the valve system, making sure your on-off pin is fully depressed and all the way up in there. Slide it in. On the back side, we can see the pin on the back side that's going to slide into the Z-slot, it slides forward. We give it a little twist and all the way dot back to the front. Come up with your field strip screw. Slide that in the bottom. Find the hole. Screw it all the way in. Screw it down tight. Now we have the valve system back in. Lastly, we take the barrel. Push the barrel in. Find the slot, lock it in position. For purposes of this demonstration, we do not have the hose attached to make it a little clearer, but ordinarily you would have a hose running down to your bottom line adapter. At this point, you can air the gun up and it should be ready to shoot. Do's and don'ts. If you're going to consider buying an aftermarket barrel for the Automag, please buy a brand name barrel. We work with the major barrel manufacturers and give them the blueprint so their barrels will interface correctly to our gun. Also, bottom line adapters are a great accessory for the Automag. 
run a hose any way you'd like into the valve. But when you get those hoses, make sure they're large enough on the inside diameter to flow enough air into the gun. Aftermarket grips, great. Trigger frames, quality manufacturer, should have no problem. Adjustment of the trigger rod is sometimes an issue on aftermarket frames. Make sure you get someone to install it for you that knows what they're doing. CO2 systems can benefit from an expansion chamber on the front of the gun. There's already a pre-drilled hole in the rail to mount such a thing. The very best accessory you can get is compressed air system. With the compressed air, the gun will maintain its maximum performance over the entire pressure of the tank. With the Automag, we work with manufacturers to ensure that you have a rich variety of accessories to go on your gun. Now that you've disassembled and reassembled the gun, it should be ready to shoot. If not, you can always call Air Gun Designs any weekday, and we'd be glad to assist you in getting over your problems. We have a long history of giving good customer service over the 10 years we've been producing the Automag. You're in our computer if you send in your warranty reg card. So give us a call, we'd like to get to know you.